In my last video, I was camping and uh, an armadillo came right up to me and bit me on the ankle. Hello, little guy. What you looking for? What you looking? You smelling my feet? Do they smell good? Oh, you tickle. Sorry, I don't have anything for you. I don't even know what you eat. Ow, you bite. And I kind of thought that was funny, but when I posted that, a lot of my viewers were really concerned because armadillos could have rabies. I wasn't really concerned, but you know what? It's better to be safe than sorry. So I'm on my way to a clinic right now. See what they say. Well, that was interesting. I went to the clinic and uh, they said, you know what? You really should just go to the hospital, the local hospital in the area, because they're gonna charge me a ton of money and there's no guarantee I'm gonna get reimbursed because they don't even itemize the receipt. So uh, they did give me an address to uh, a hospital and uh, it's not that far away. Might as well try it out if it's simpler and it saves me money. Sounds like a good idea. So I'm off again, this time to a hospital. And fortunately, there's one only about 15 minutes away. So let's see what they say. Well, I'm now on the Blue Angel Parkway. Now, when I was a kid, a blue angel was when you held a match to your butt and you farted. <laughs> you got a blue angel, but I got a feeling that's not what they named it after. Well, that looks like it over there. I'm in the emergency department, sitting around, seeing what's gonna happen. Fingers crossed. You may have noticed that my camper wasn't in tow. That's because I dropped it off at a campsite prior to my medical visits. Well, I'm at a campsite near an airport, so uh, if I have to talk a little louder, you know why. Anyway, at, at least I'm camping. That's a good thing because I spent most of the day at, you know, medical facilities trying to figure this thing out. Uh, I had no idea something like this would be so complicated but it is because it is very, very rare that anybody gets bit by an armadillo. And of course, it had to happen to me. And uh, you know, if it was something else like, uh, you know, a, a flu or, you know, drinking bad water or something like that, I, you know, I wouldn't even be concerned. However, there are some diseases that are fatal that it's almost 100% sure you will die if infected. Uh, one of them is rabies. So uh, I went to the clinics, I was evaluated, I told them the situation, I even showed them the video. But the call, the final call was up to me. Did I want to get the vaccine or not? And I sort of thought about it for about 10 minutes and I finally went ahead with it. Yes, I have started the vaccine and 
it's a tough one. I got eight shots. I got three in the ankle. I got, well, I had to get a tetanus shot in one shoulder. I had another shot in the other shoulder. I had one at each side of my butt and a final one. Um, the ones in the ankle were the most painful because, you know, there's not much around the ankle. But I went through it, I survived it. I flinched a little bit, let's be honest, but uh, I, I, you know, I got through it and I got back to a campsite. Oh yeah, and by the way, I also have to take some antibiotics. However, that is not the end because you can't just go one day and get the shots. You have to do the follow-up. And for anybody's, in, if you wanna know what it is, it's the human diploid cell vaccine hdcv is what i'm taking and i have to go back in two days so i am stuck here you know i have to be in the area i'm in pensacola for at least two days however there's more because i also have to have a shot seven days and in 14 days now I'm trying to find out if I can get the remaining shots somewhere else, and I haven't got the answer for that yet. Fortunately, I don't have to take eight shots every time. The rest are just one, which I can handle. But it really kind of messes up my travel plans because I wasn't even expecting to stay in Pensacola. I was expecting just to sort of pass through, get some information and keep going. But the first thing they said is that if I was in contact, if it is in my bloodstream, I only have between 24 and 72 hours to start treatment. So it wasn't like I could just go for a week and decide about it later on. I have really had to decide right now, and I did. I am at Big Lagoon State Park, and let me just show you on the map here. That is Pensacola right there, and I am right down in this area right here. It's a wonderful park. Um, it's there's the the campground site. I think I'm somewhere around here. There's lots of spaces. Yes, it is for primarily for RVs, but they're spaced well. There's uh, lots of greenery and trees in between. I will obviously review it and tell you what I think at the end. But today I get to explore. It's also getting cloudy, so if I want to do some exploring, I better do it soon. And my first stop was a boardwalk on East Beach. Definitely got to check out the lookout. Ooh, windy. What a view. And this is the Big Lagoon. This winding river leads back to another waterway, the Grand Lagoon.
Along the trails are info plaques to identify local flora and fauna, like this deer moss. They seem very well placed, as this blue heron plaque actually had a blue heron behind it. I wonder how many fish he was paid just to stand there. This place is made for bird watchers. I mean, there's so many species, and there's birds in the trees, there's birds on the shore. It's absolutely incredible. Watch the cormorant at the left. He says, nope, I'm not going, I'm staying here. Oh, oh wait guys, wait for me. This osprey is looking for a fish dinner. Well, I don't know what these berries are, but this bird really seems to love them. I think I'll call him the Gobbleberry Bird, although somebody else might have the real name. You can't walk a trail here without seeing birds, even one that matches your wardrobe. That red-winged blackbird said it's time to head back. Moon's coming up, and the sun's going down. And after sundown, it got a little chilly that night. Oh, it's still a little cold here. Uh, but, Good news, I didn't rely on electricity last night, and it's a good thing because apparently an RV backed over his outlet and that caused most of the site to go without power. I had propane, so I was okay. Even though I had to actually turn it up a little bit more than I usually do, it kept me warm. Others were a little disappointed in one of the coldest nights of the year. However, Today is the day I was supposed to get my second shot, and I have some great news because I was in contact with the Department of Health for Florida, and they said I do not have to get any more shots. They said the risk is extremely, extremely small. There was no, uh, you know, it did not penetrate the skin, and they have no known cases of armadillos giving rabies in this area so they recommended no more shots and that is fantastic because now I'm free to travel again I don't have to wait around for shots and I'm at very very low risk now I still think I did the right thing um, I'm not an expert on anything medical and uh, I rely on the experts with the doctors and all that for advice you know the the first people were not very experienced with this but the Department of Health were and I rely on their expertise and so I'm happy with that. Sunshine and it's warm. Perfect day to do a little exploring. This time it was a road trip to see what was in the area. Just west of the park is the Perdido Key. Perdido Key does have a state park very close to a big lagoon. And uh, it's a beautiful natural beach. Um, being that it's January, it's not the perfect time for swimming, and I don't think they allow it right now. But you're welcome to walk the beach, you know, just chill out, and maybe uh, look for seashells.
There's lots of shorebirds to see. This one, however, seemed to have a bad case of sand fleas. According to the sign, he was a willet. So let's call these three willets Itchy, Scratchy, and Fleabag. Way too cold for swimming. But it's never too cold to look for seashells, and this beach had lots of them. My eye caught this shiny one, but it turns out it was just garbage. Not much of a shell collector, I guess. Back at camp, I decided to have one last hike on the trails. Now there are alligators here, but in January there's none to be seen. They're all hunkered down until it warms up a little bit. So uh, yeah, coming here in say May or June, there's probably a lot more wildlife to see and uh, it's a little bit warmer. But January, you're most likely to get a good spot. And so there's always a trade-off. If you go to peak season, it can be more of a challenge. And just as I was watching a bird, I heard a rustle in the bushes. Russell, is that you? Nope, it was my old friend, the armadillo, and he was out sniffing around again. But this one did not have an ankle fetish, so I was okay, and he was quite content sifting through the sand, see what was on the menu. At sunset, this flock of birds took over the skies. They were roosting for the night as there's always safety in numbers, especially when there's owls around. But there's always one late guy. Where were you, Fred? I saw one last golden sunset as I would be leaving Big Lagoon in the morning. The morning sun peeked through the curtains. Well, when I woke up this morning, I had condensation on my window, which is uh, not surprising. Uh, it's not from the heater, it's not from the stove, it's from me. It's moisture as I exhale at night, especially when I'm snoring. And I've tried many things to reduce the condensation on this big window, and none of them have been really that effective. You know, I've tried various covers and plastic, and, you know, unless I'm going to do an absolute perfect seal, it seems I'm always going to get condensation. But one of my viewers had an idea that they shared with me. I think the, the, uh, the viewer's name was Carrie. And uh, she suggested, or he, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure, a window vacuum. And I've never heard of one, so I did some searching around. And uh, yeah, apparently there's quite a few of them out there. But uh, for me, they were a little bit expensive. Uh, I think there's one called a, uh, a Karcher, which at least Canadian was over $100. However, uh, I went to a, a Martins in Maine and 
I found this. And this was, I think I paid, uh, what did I pay? $34.99. And it's made by Turbulence. It's a Turbulence window cleaner. Um, a little bit bigger than what I need, but you'd be amazed at, uh, at how well it works. Um, it, it plugs in, it's got like a lithium battery in it. And there it goes. And leave her there. Watch this. And that's it. And there's the water right there. Um, if it's really, really humid in here, if I do all the windows, I can fill this canister right up. And uh, there you go. I can see I'm not adding any moisture because what happens is it starts dripping down and then it gets in here and then it goes down there and everything starts getting moldy and stinky. So uh, if you happen to find one of these, I think it's a good deal. And uh, thanks for the idea, Carrie. Well, I'm all packed up, ready to head out. But before I do, I wanted to give a review of this campsite. This is Big Lagoon State Park. It's just outside of Pensacola, Florida. Um, wonderful area. I mean, you're in the trees, lots of vegetation, shade if you need it. Um, I paid $20 a night for this spot, and there are bigger spots. This is one of the smaller ones. If you wanted utilities, it's an additional $7 a night. And there were taxes on that, so I actually paid $22.50 a night for what I got. Um, one of the good things is it is a state park, but Unlike other places, they don't charge you for admission to the park. It's included in the campsite fee, which I found was really good. Uh, as far as, you know, what there's here, well, there is so many things here. There's lots of wildlife, there's lots of birds, there's a lagoon, there's ponds, there's walking trails, there's the shore. If you wanna go right out to the ocean, it's very, very close. Now, the other bonus here is that it, when you pay for your campground, you're also allowed to go at, to uh, Perdido Key State Park and uh, Tarkiln Bayou Preserve for free. You don't have to pay admission. So value-wise, it's really good. Um, the sites are clean. You get a fire pit, you get a picnic table. The restrooms are amongst the best I have ever seen. They are well kept, they're tiled, they're big. You get hot water, you know, in the, uh, the sinks. You can plug things in. They have like 120 outlets. The showers are hot and they're like really, really well kept. Uh, just go here for the, for the restrooms, if nothing else. There's also many picnic areas and a boat ramp, which is also good for kayaks. Just don't get your dog drunk there. There's a lot of things that you'd see more of if it was in the summertime, but you still see the migrating birds and, and that's worth it. So for $20 to me, this is definitely good value. Big Lagoon State Park, two thumbs up for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my others as well. And I hope you'll join me on my next stop as I travel through a few warm states. Happy travels. Well, guess what? I'm having a Pepsi Cola in Pensacola. Imagine that.